Just a few weeks ago, we lost one of the greatest, most beloved voice actresses to ever do it, Atsuko Tanaka. Best known for her roles voicing strong female characters like Motoko Kusanagi in Ghost in the Shell, Conan from Naruto Shippuden, and Lisa Lisa from JoJo's Bizarre Adventures. It's a heck of a list, and believe me, it goes on from there. But it was her son and fellow voice actor, Hikaru Tanaka, who had to break the news that that list was now complete because after a hard-fought, year-long battle with an unnamed illness, she passed away at the age of 61. Too soon, too soon. It's been a bad month for voice actors. In less than 30 days, we lost Atsuko, and then Emi Shinohara, who was the voice of Sailor Jupiter, and the freaking voice of Darth Vader, James Earl Jones. And yes, I'm aware that one of those things is not like the others. But Atsuko is very close to my heart as the voice of the major in Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex, which was one of my formative anime and honestly, a big part of why I'm even here talking to you right now. So come take a seat at the bar and we'll celebrate Atsuko's more than 30 years of voice acting as I tell you the story of a woman who later in life decided to leave her office job behind to chase a dream only to end up becoming one of the most powerful voices in the industry today on Mixing Media. That is so good. Being one of the most powerful voices in the industry, I thought it fitting to make an industry sour that combines the sweetness of green chartreuse with the bitterness of Fernet into a strong, bittersweet cocktail that may not be for everybody, but it will certainly leave an impression on you. Much like this quote from Otsuko really resonated with me. Even if it wasn't stable, if I could get a job that I liked, it would be rewarding and I could continue doing it for the rest of my life. Now this isn't some deep philosophical musing as quotes so often are, and it's not even really a piece of advice. It's just something that I, and I imagine a lot of other people, have also thought while doing corporate monkey work within the aggressively cream-colored walls of a cubicle, wondering what lies beyond the corporate culture and concrete of the financial district. So yeah, what can I say? I really identified with what she said. And it was even more meaningful because it came from someone who very much lived it. At the age of 27, Atsuko realized that she couldn't see herself spending the rest of her life as a secretary. And despite fearing that it was too late for her, she decided to leave the stability of her corporate job behind and take a leap of faith into the world of voice acting. But she didn't immediately know that it was voice acting she wanted to pursue. All she knew is that she wanted a job she could do for the rest of her life. And to find that, she turned to her passions, acting and dance. As a child, her father would often take her to see the Broadway-style shows of the Takarazuka Review, an all-female theater troupe that would often perform in her hometown of Maibashi in the Gunma Prefecture. Oh my god, there is a bug. Go away. Okay. <laughs> uh, on top of that, her mother was a huge cinema buff and would take her to see double or even triple features at the nearby Orion Theater. And these formative childhood experiences would inspire her to pursue acting and dance, which she would then fall in love with because it gave her a much needed outlet for self-expression. Otsuko often said she couldn't express herself well in words, but acting allowed her to escape that part of herself by becoming somebody else entirely and dance gave her a means of self-expression that didn't even need words. So she would continue to pursue these passions all the way through college until it began to set in. That harsh reality that comes for all our childhood dreams. You gotta make money. Okay, maybe that's a little too depressing. Not all our childhood dreams, just most of them. With the encouragement of her parents, Atsuko entered the corporate world, which takes up a lot of your time, especially with how Japanese work culture is. So she was forced to take a break from acting, but was able to continue to dance. And it was in her dance troupe that a fellow dancer would tell her about voice acting at a time when, after six years of being a secretary, she was ready to get out. But if you like learning about the people behind your favorite characters in anime, give the video a like, subscribe, and check out the previous episode I did on the disastrous production of Tenji Muyo, an influential anime from the 90s that not enough people are talking about these days. 
And if there's any creators, directors, voice actors, shows, any of that that you want to see me cover, submit me a request down in the comment section. Now, the kind of voice acting her friend told her about isn't what you're thinking of. It wasn't voice acting anime characters. It was dubbing over actors in Western films for Japanese audiences. This isn't something she's particularly known for here in the West, because who's out here watching Japanese dubs of Western shows other than maybe people trying to learn Japanese? But either way, she was prolific in her dubbing work. She voiced Julia Roberts, Gwyneth Paltrow, aka the Goop Lady, and Jennifer Lopez. That's right, she was Japanese J-Lo. But one actress she felt she had a really special connection to was Nicole Kidman, and she dubbed pretty much everything she ever did. Which means there is a chance that somewhere floating around out there, there is a version of that really overdramatic AMC intro featuring the voice of the major. Somehow, heartbreak feels good in a place like this. Another one that really made me laugh was her role as Phoebe in Friends, and I'll let that one speak for itself. <laughs> Now, if you were really paying attention, you may have noticed another familiar voice coming from Joey, Hiroaki Hirata, who's also the voice of Sanji from One Piece. What a crossover that would be. Ghost in the Shell meets One Piece meets Friends. <laughs> but it was in the Japanese dub of the movie Unlawful Entry that she would debut as a voice actor playing the female lead Karen Carr. And not too long after, in 1993, she would get a huge milestone for her career when she was cast as yet another Karen in Lupin the Third Voyage to Danger. She played Karen Kerensky, who wasn't a major character, but being involved with Lupin in any capacity was a big deal. Here in the West, Lupin the Third is a pretty niche anime. A lot of people have maybe heard the name, but very few have actually seen any of it. But in Japan, it is a franchise that is just massive, and it's almost like their version of James Bond. It's got a lot of name recognition, so that was a role that could really get her some attention. And it certainly did, because two years later, she would land her breakout leading role as Motoko Kusanagi in the original Ghost in the Shell movie that truly brought her work to Western audiences. Being just a voice actor in the film, Atsuko likely didn't realize what she had just signed on to, but the legendary producer Shigeru Watanabe had big plans for Ghost in the Shell. After the unexpected success of Akira overseas, he decided to continue to lean into the movie's sci-fi realism style and build a production team that could explicitly craft Ghost in the Shell to reach both Japanese and Western audiences. And you don't need me to tell you that his plan worked. Now, the success of the movie was actually a bit of a surprise to Atsuko because she didn't feel very confident about her first performance as the Major. She would say that the Major often felt like a distant presence she was always trying to catch up to. But I think anyone would feel that way if they had to debate the nature of the conscious mind in character as a cyborg on the verge of an existential crisis. And she still pulled it off. Her performance was amazing, and she would gain more confidence as she continued to play the major for all of the franchise's entries to date, ending on what would end up being her last performance in Ghost in the Shell 2045. Over her 27 years playing the major, she would begin to think, in her words, maybe it's okay to rely on Motoko, allowing her to approach the role with a more relaxed attitude and a sense of partnership with the character. And you can feel this connection that she's formed with Motoko towards the end of the first season of Standalone Complex, where there is this one scene that will forever stick with me. It's when the last bit of humanity Motoko has left, her human brain is about to be crushed under the foot of an armored suit. And seconds before her world goes dark, the rest of Section 9 arrive just in time to blast it off of her. And in this moment, we watch what's usually an extremely composed character for the first time break down and lose control as she grabs what is basically a small cannon and fires round after round after round into the man inside the armored suit. And it's here that Atsuko delivers one of the most raw and emotional performances that I have ever seen across any piece of media. It's probably the most badass thing I've ever seen. One of these days, Standalone Complex is gonna get its own episode, but I wanna make sure I do it right, because I really only get one chance at it. So, uh, release date TBD. But to call back to her dubbing work, she even got to dub over Scarlett Johansson in the Japanese release of the live-action Ghost in the Shell movie. That's like 
the definition of coming full circle. In between her time as the major, she took on a number of other roles that I'm resisting the urge to just list all of because though they are all great, she was prolific, so the list is very long. But to name a few I haven't mentioned yet, she was very recently Flamme in Freeren, Hanami in Jujutsu Kaisen, and Bayonetta in the Bayonetta anime. She was Bayonetta in the games too, but you know, similar to the Japanese dub work she did, you're probably not playing games with Japanese audio, which means you're also completely unaware that if you boot up a Japanese copy of Tomb Raider 2, you'll find Atsuko as the voice of Laura Croft. She's also Kaine and Nier, which is probably the game people are most likely to be playing with Japanese audio. But like I said, this is only a small fraction of her characters, so let me know if I missed your favorite Atsuko character down in the comments. With the sheer number of roles she took on in her career, you might think that she never left the recording booth. But she did, in fact, have a personal life where she was a mother to fellow voice actor Hikaru Tanaka, who just recently appeared in Skip and Loafer, and sadly only got to announce that he was her son when he had to announce that she had passed away. Outside of him, she also had a few other uh, fuzzier children. After the Adventure World Zoo got two new giant pandas, Atsuko appeared on a radio show as an anonymous guest under an alias to help give them names. Her alias was Ripe Mango. <laughs> but of course, with such a distinctive voice, the host instantly recognized her, and after everyone was finished being starstruck, they chose the names Yuhin and Saihin, and Atsuko even got to become one of their godparents. Atsuko is also survived by her two close friends, Kikuko Inoue, who played Lust in Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, and Rika Fukami, the voice of Sailor Venus, with whom she shared a love for the baseball team, the Hikaido Nippon Ham Fighters. And that, my friends, was the life and career of the wonderful Atsuko Tanaka, who, now that she's left us, we can truly say, achieved that goal that she set for herself all those years ago finding a job that she could do for the rest of her life. And uh, maybe that's a little too heavy of a note to end on. So here's some bad voice acting to lighten the mood. There's no reason for me to go on. What? What am I fighting for? Ah, works every time. With that, I'm Austin. Go put on some Ghost in the Shell, or maybe even the Japanese dub of Friends. Whatever your favorite performance by Atsuko Tanaka is, and I'll see you here next time on Mixing Media. Bye bye